In what turned out to be a very entertaining heavyweight fight, Philip Hergovich managed to survive the 12 rounds against Zheli Zhang and secure a controversial, I think it's fair to say, 12 round unanimous decision in this IBF final eliminator. Now, I was surprised by how competitive this fight was. I didn't think it would be a complete whitewash by Philip Hergovic. I didn't think he'd go in there and get Zhang out in one or two rounds, but I thought that he would be the boss in the ring. I thought that he, with the better boxing skills, would control the fight and it would just be a matter of time before he either stopped Zhang maybe late or won a comfortable decision on the scorecards. And when you look at the scorecards on paper, they seem comfortable, but that doesn't tell the story of the fight. So in the first round, Hergovic comes out, he's establishing his jab, he is the faster guy at long range. Zhang is fast with the hooks and the uppercuts up close, but with the straight shots at long range, Hergovic is the boss. And so he's establishing his distance, he's doing his thing, his jab is popping, he's going up and down, head and body, but then suddenly, Zhang lands what appears at the time to be a right hook, and Philip Hergovic goes down. And Hergovic looks a little confused by what's just happened. He gets to his feet. He doesn't appear to be desperately hurt, but Zhang is definitely spurred on by what's just happened. And that was unfortunate from my perspective because upon watching the slow motion replay, that wasn't a knockdown. And Philip Hergovic was winning that round for my money up until that point. The punch landed on the back of the head and it didn't even land with the knuckle part of the glove. It was actually the inside of his glove. The inside of his right glove cuffed Philip Hergovic round the back of the head and almost pulled him down. It was almost like a pull down. That's basically what I saw in the slow motion replay. And so that shouldn't have been a 10 8 for Zhang, but it went down as a 10 8 officially. And this is why. I don't have as big an issue with the result of the fight as some other people do because people are saying the scorecards were fishy. They were far too favorable to uh, Philip Hergovich. And I kind of agree with that, but I don't think that first round should have been a 10 8. So I understand people's suspicions about the, uh, the scoring and the judges and what have you. I get that. But in terms of what's fair, I think that the first round shouldn't have been a 10 8. I think that should have been a 10 9 for Hergovic. In any case, the fight continues. Uh, Hergovic, off the top of my head, on my card, I think wins the second round as well. Zhang comes back. But then, in one of the other early rounds, Philip Hergovic suffers a nasty cut on his head. Right? Not on his face, but somewhere up on his head, under his hair. And starts bleeding quite badly. And this is another round where he was doing well. He seemed to be building momentum. But they have this clash of heads. Zhang's face actually hits Philip Hergovic on the side of the head. But somehow Zhang comes out better <laughs> from the situation. So he's clearly got tough skin on his face, Zheli Zhang. And from my money, again, Hergovic seemed to be perturbed by all the blood that was pouring out of his head. He seemed to be taken aback. He seemed disturbed by it. And we've seen that in some fights, like when Josh Kelly fought Avenesian. I'm not saying Josh Kelly would have beat Avenesian even without the cut, but that cut definitely affected him psychologically. And I think it was something similar with Philip Hergovich. Psychologically, he was thrown off his game when he received that cut. The blood was pouring out of him. I know George Foreman once spoke about what it's like to get cut. And he said that you just feel drained. You know, it's a psychological thing, perhaps more than a physical thing, depending on how much blood is coming out of you, but you could just feel drained. And as I say, I think that's what happened to Hergovic there. And Zhang, as you should, took advantage of the situation. He realized that Hergovic was, uh, as I say, a little disturbed by what was going on. And so he pushed the action and he started landing combinations and really. The story of this fight was Zheli Zhang's right hook. And shout out to uh, Pound for Pound Boxing, by the way, in my element group, because he actually picked Zhang to win this fight 
and he said, watch out for Zhang's right hook. Hergovic was making the same mistake all the way through the fight, whereby he would lean in and his, his head would lean forward when he was throwing his right hand. And that's when Zhang would either beat him to the punch or counter with his right hook, because Hergovic's left shoulder was coming back, therefore his shoulders are squared up when he's throwing his right hand, and his left hand is down. And many, many times when he would do that with his head forward, Zhang is catching him with his short right hook up close. Time and time and time again. What Hergovic should have been doing is getting that left hand up putting it maybe in front of his mouth or in front of his face when he's throwing the right hand or change the angle right step to your right first i know it's counterintuitive because you're thinking about the southpaw backhand but you can feint first maybe to draw the backhand then step to your right and fire right but instead he was being caught with the same shot over and over again the short right hook by zhang i mean at one point zhang could barely miss with the punch and there were moments here where Philip Hergovic was hurt, where Philip Hergovic looked very tired, particularly in the middle rounds, and it looked touch and go for a, a minute there. Like Hergovic might not actually survive the fight, but he found his second wind. And Hergovic hasn't been in a tough fight for many years. I watched him in the WSB, and he was in some tough fights there against the likes of Joe Joyce against Sergei Kuzmin, and he got hit with big shots in some of those WSB fights. You, how can I describe it? Basically, those tough fights happened such a long time ago that the mental toughness that you develop coming through wars like that can kind of wane a little bit when you're just fighting journeymen and the, the type of opposition that Hergovic has fighting since turning, been fighting since turning professional. And it can maybe take the edge off you a little bit. I'm not saying Hergovic went soft, but he's maybe not as battle-hardened now or going into the Zhang fight as he was when he was in the WSB. So I think that this fight, as long as there isn't any lasting damage done to Hergovic neurologically, you know, physically, from a psychological point of view, I think this fight is going to do Hergovic the world of good. He needed a tough fight. It had been too easy for him since turning pro. He needed to be reminded what it's like to be fighting at a higher level against guys who are coming in there to win, who have certain skills, and who are trying to hurt you. But anyway, Hergovic, who, by the way, came in much lighter for this fight than he has for his past couple, which is testament to how seriously he was taking it. He found his second wind, and he started boxing. He started catching Zhang with right hands. He started going to his body using the jab, he was still getting clipped with that short right hook from Zhang for far too often for my liking, but nonetheless, he did get his second win, and it was Zhang who looked tired, but the thing about Zhang is, he paced himself very well in this fight, this wasn't like Je the Jerry Forrest thing, I know he said he was dehydrated and whatever against Jerry Forrest, but he paced himself very well, he was the more tired of the two in the final couple rounds, uh, Zhang that is, but he knows what he is, Zhang. He knows what he's good at. He knows when he can attack, uh, when he needs to take time off. So this is a fighter. I speak in the Joshua Usyk post-fight video and another video I did about Joshua Usyk about the fact that for me, AJ hasn't fulfilled his potential yet. He hasn't taken his physical ability to its zenith at this point. He isn't the complete fighter yet. Zhang is, in terms of the, the kind of ability he has, he's maximized it. He's maxed it out for my money. Right? He knows what he's supposed to be doing. He knows his limitations. He knows his strengths. And he plays to them. Did so very well in this fight. Whenever he got Hergovic up close again, he was looking for that right hook counter. And when he had him up against the ropes, he was letting rip <laughs> with combinations, hitting Hergovic, all sorts of you know, shots on the chin and on the, you know, in the face, on the temple, etc. Hergovic showed real good whiskers, <laughs> if nothing else. But I knew that from watching the WSB. If you saw him in there, he showed real good whiskers as well. And so did Jelly Zhang, actually. Zhang showed a tremendous chin because Hergovic can punch. I'm not saying Hergovic is the biggest one punch 
knockout artist in the division, but he can definitely punch. Zhang was able to take all those shots. And I think there was only one occasion in the fight where Zhang looked a little wobbled. But other than that, he took Hergovic's shots no problem. Zhang, more, much more so than Hergovic, keeps his chin tucked though. And that can sometimes be, you know, be a little deceiving because you can think a guy's chin is better than it is, but it's just the fact that he's got his chin tucked down and you're not really catching the point of the chin you know, right on the side of the jaw as often as you'd like. So it can give this impression that he's got this really good punch resistance. And he does have good punch resistance to some degree. But Hergovic wasn't catching him as flush on the chin as Zhang was catching Hergovic. Uh, Zhang was catching Hergovic with real flush punches on the chin. And uh, Hergovic took him. You know, he's definitely got some whiskers on him. But he caught his second wind. And he won the majority of the, you know, the second half, the rounds of the second half of the fight, I would say. Well, certainly the, the last third of the fight, let's say the final four rounds, it was a Hergovic situation. So get to the final bell. Now, in terms of the result, Hergovic getting his hand raised, I don't think it's a robbery. It was a competitive fight. It's a fight where there were some close rounds and you know, Hergovic had you know, some success in the slow rounds with his jab and whatever. And one thing I mentioned in the live stream as well is that Zhang was quite crafty. There was a veteran trick he was using where he would try and just be conservative with his offense so he doesn't get countered too much through, let's say, the first two minutes of the round. And then in the final minute, he would try and launch a serious assault to try and steal it. You see, he did that quite a lot, Zhang. So <laughs> some crafty veteran moves there. But yeah, the scorecards, I, I thought the result was okay. I think it could have gone either way. If they'd given it to Zhang by a couple rounds, I wouldn't have complained. Giving it to Hergovic, can't complain. But the fact that it was unanimous, the fact that they had to give the first round 10-8, because even though I don't think it was a knockdown, officially you have to score it that way because the referee decided it was a knockdown. And in that context, you look at these and you say, eh, Zhang was maybe hard done by because of the fact that you know he didn't, even get one judge seeing it in his favor. But as I said earlier on, just from a purely fairness point of view, if we forget about the judges' scorecards, I don't think that knockdown in the first round was actually a knockdown. I think Hergovic was hard done by with that call from the referee. It was what it was. Hergovic marches on to a heavyweight title shot. He won this IBF final eliminator, and the IBF tend to uh, fast track their mandatory challenges to world titles. It isn't like with a WBC where you're going to be waiting around for months on end or years. <laughs> with the IBF, it normally happens pretty quick. And don't be surprised if they call for Alexander Usyk to face Hergovic within the next month or so. Don't be surprised if that happens. That's what the IBF tends to be like. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you make of Hergovic's performance? Were you disappointed by the performance? Do you think, like me, that it was a wake-up call for him and this will actually stand him in good stead? Or do you think he's too limited to trouble the likes of Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury, etc.? Leave your comments below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, 
and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.